York. I'm Paige Plinsky with the latest local news, including an armed robbery in Fairfield over the weekend, a power outage leaving thousands in the dark on Saturday, and much more. Frank Granito has your forecast and a Nutmeg Sports update later on, and Donald Eng will join us later to take a look back on this day in history. But first, Fairfield police on Sunday said they are looking for an armed robbery suspect. Now, this happened at Star Fuels on Jennings Road near Black Rock Turnpike. Police say that suspect was armed with a knife and described as a white male, approximately six foot tall in his 20s or 30s, with long brown hair and cuts and scrapes on his hands. Now, if you have any information, Fairfield police are asking you to call them at 203-254-4840. And about 16 residential burglaries have been reported in the past two months in Milford. And on most occasions, police say a large rock has been thrown through a rear window or door to gain entry. Now, these burglaries occur mostly between 4 and 8 p.m. Jewelry, lock boxes, and other items that can easily be carried have been taken from bedrooms. Now, police said the burglaries have taken place on Lower Naugatuck Avenue, High Street, and in the vicinity of Foreign High School. However, they say all areas of the city need to be on alert. Now, an older model gray sedan was seen near one of these incidents, police said, and a light-colored minivan was seen at another. Now, witnesses reported seeing a male described as white in his 30s with facial hair, wearing a hooded sweatshirt, jeans, and gloves at one of those incidents. Now, at the most recent incident, a light-skinned male was seen jogging through that area dressed in dark clothes. Police are asking residents to be vigilant and immediately report any suspicious people or vehicles at the time that they are observed. You can get more information at MilfordMirror.com. And in other news, nearly 24,000 United Illuminating customers in Stratford and Bridgeport lost power late Saturday night. Kevin Ortiz, a spokesman for United Illuminating, said Sunday that the outage was related to issues at two substations. Now, that outage occurred at about 9.45 p.m. Roughly 14,000 customers had their power restored within 15 minutes, and all other customers had their power back by about 5.30 a.m. on Sunday. Ortiz said the cause of those outages is still under investigation. And Norwalk police have arrested three local men for home invasion and assault that occurred back on November 23, 2017. Now, on February 9th, police arrested Luke Sweeney, Joseph Ponger, and Michael Mayorino, all of Norwalk, on warrants for assault, home invasion, and conspiracy following a lengthy investigation. Now, back on November 23rd at 1 in the morning, a 911 caller reported that several people had broken into the residence and had viciously assaulted one of the occupants. Patrol officers arrived on scene and discovered a male victim victims suffering from numerous stab wounds and slash wounds. However, the suspects had fled the scene. Well, that victim was transported by ambulance to Norwalk Hospital, and the investigation, led by Detective Brendan Collins, revealed that multiple masked assailants forced entry into that home, and one of the assailants contacted the victim who was in bed, and a struggle ensued. Well, the assailants then began stabbing that victim who fought back and believed he was able to injure one of those attackers. Now, at this time, all of the suspects fled the residence, and members of the crime scene unit processed the scene for evidence, discovering evidence both inside and outside of the home. Now, that evidence and numerous interviews and canvassing of that area led police to those three suspects now charged. And during a recent 18-month period, 21 people died of accidental drug overdoses in Stratford, and almost all died from opioids such as heroin. Now, according to officials, most were white men ages 30 to 35 and 50 to 65. Now, Kelly Meyer, a health educator with the Stratford Health Department, said that average age surprises people because most presume it's younger, younger people who are overdosing. She said it's not just kid, it's, it's a range of ages. Now, statewide statistics also show that most accidental drug-related deaths involve people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, with 917 Connecticut residents dying that way in 2016. Now, overdose deaths in Connecticut have grown at a much faster rate than the national average in recent years, according to Meyer, and the number of opioid-related deaths is likely to continue increasing. She also said that the number of women becoming addicted to heroin, oxycodone, and other opioids is on the rise. Now, Meyer discussed the opioid crisis during a lunch and learn talk at the Stratford Library touching on statistics, narcotics history, how opioids work in the human body, and the use of Narcan to save someone who's overdosing. There's much more on that story at StraffordStar.com. 
And in other news, a committee report shows that the New Canaan Police Department's headquarters needs some serious repairs. One of the larger single items in the Board of Selectmen's proposed capital budget for 2018-2019 is $500,000 for design and engineering plans to reconfigure and renovate the New Canaan Police Headquarters building on South Avenue. Now that 27,000 square foot three floor building was built in 1926 as a school and it was renovated for police use back in 1981 and it's overdue for for repairs and improvements, according to Police Chief Leon Krolikowski. Now, the top floor is being viewed as a potential home for the Duquesne and Public Schools Central offices, which now pays about $300,000 per year to rent space. Now, that space would have to be designed and set up for those school offices. Well, the town's Building Use and Evaluation Committee report, dated on December 2nd, reviewed the police headquarters and cited capital needs as extensive. The report said, in part, all major systems are beyond their useful life. The layout is inefficient with an enormous amount of dead and unused space and the entrance is uninviting. They also said the top floor is chronically underutilized and there are some coder complaint issues. You can get much more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. But taking a turn now, we're going to throw it over to Frank Renito for a look at your forecast. Frank. All right, thank you, Kate. Still pretty cloudy out right now. We could see a couple more uh, Combinations of wintry mixes moving through the early afternoon. We'll see periods of rain, possibly snow, even hail at points in time this morning around the county. But it should start to clear up as we get further into the afternoon. Increasing amounts of sun are expected. A high of 43 today before mainly clear skies overnight with a low of 21. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow around Fairfield County. A little bit cooler with temperatures in the mid to high 30s. Partly cloudy skies on Tuesday. Wednesday, much of the same in the early part of the day, mostly sunny, but we see increasing cloud cover coming in the afternoon. A little more mild out, temperatures around 44, 45 degrees, considerably cloudy overnight, and there is a chance for some late night showers heading into Thursday morning. That'll do it for this weather update. Good luck out there this Monday. Back over to Kate. All right, thanks so much, Frank. And we are going to step out for a break, come back. Donald Eng will take a look back on this day in history. Frank has your Nutmeg Sports update, and we have more local news after this. Dr. Stephen Molinaro and Peter Healy of Family Practice Dentistry and Laser Dental Care have served Richfield for over 22 years. Experienced staff offer gentle drillless techniques, preventative care, and cosmetic procedures in a relaxed environment. Grateful for the community's trust and support through the years, new patients and their families are welcome. Call today. At Ring's End, we say it's time to re-love your home. Time to refresh and reinvigorate the way you live. And whether you're redoing something big or small, remember the letters R-E stand for Ring's End. We're the new model in home remodeling. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the women. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Welcome back to this February 12th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Time to take a look back on this day in history with Donald Ng. Don. Well, Kate, uh, challenges to political leadership, uh, kind of the theme of today's update. First, though, we go back to 1909. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, that is the NAACP, founded as a biracial organization whose mission was, in part, to promote equality of rights and to eradicate caste or race prejudice among the citizens of the United States. Uh, today, the NAACP is the, the largest civil rights organization with about 425,000 members. 1983, now 100 women protest in Lahore, Pakistan against military dictator Zu al-Haq's proposed law of evidence. Now, the women, uh, as you can see there, were uh, tear-gassed, uh, batoned, and then thrown into prison. They were successful 
in getting the law repealed. The law, by the way, was intended to bring Pakistan's civil law into line with religious law, would have counted the testimony of two women as the equivalent of one man. 2002 now, the trial of, of former Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic begins at the UN Tribunal at The Hague. Uh, Milosevic was accused of war crimes during the Balkan Wars of the late 1990s. The trial, which began in 2002, would continue until 2010, when it ended without a verdict. Milosevic himself actually died in 2006, four years before his war crimes trial ended. Uh, finally now, uh, speaking of presidents on trial, we go to 1999 for this. Now that the Senate has fulfilled its constitutional responsibility, bringing this process to a conclusion, I want to say again to the American people how profoundly sorry I am for what I said and did to trigger these events and the great burden they have imposed on the Congress and on the American people. That, of course, was uh, President Bill Clinton, who on this date in 1999 acquitted by the Senate in his impeachment trial. He had been impeached by the House on perjury and obstruction of justice in the, civil sexual, in the sexual harassment civil suit brought by Paula Jones. Needing 67 Senate votes to remove Clinton, he was acquitted of perjury, 55 to 45. The Senate deadlocked 50-50 on obstruction. That is your look back in history for today, February 12th, and I'm Donna Ling. All right. Thanks so much, Don. Well, in other local news, a Strafford man is facing multiple drug possession and weapons charges after his arrest last Thursday. 27-year-old Eric Herman is being charged with two counts of possession of narcotics with intent to sell, one count of possession with intent to sell within 1,500 feet of a daycare, as well as first-degree reckless endangerment, improper storage of a loaded firearm, as well as illegal transfer of a firearm and criminal possession of a firearm. Now, Strafford police officers from the narcotics Vice and Intelligence Unit executed a search warrant at 317 Stony Brook Road relating to narcotic sales. Police said detectives learned during the investigation that Herman was involved in the sale of prescription pills, heroin, and crack cocaine. Police said officers also seized a large amount of oxycodone, oxycontin, and crack cocaine. Detectives seized a loaded firearm, which was an easy access, they say, of a minor child and a large amount of cash. Police recovered three stolen firearms in a separate investigation. Now, Herman was being held on a $20,000 bond and is scheduled to appear in court on February 20th. And in other news, Governor Daniel P. Malloy visited ASML offices at 60 Danbury Road in Wilton on February 8th to help tout the company's $100 million expansion project that will add 500 engineering and manufacturing jobs over the next several years. Now, Malloy said in part it's exciting to see the opportunity for 500 additional jobs being created in this marketplace by this great company, he said, understanding the broad reach of this company and what it means to see investment made in Connecticut. Now, Malloy said that ASML jobs will combine with others at Sikorsky Aircraft in Stratford, Pratt and Whitney and Electric Boat in Groton to account for new manufacturing jobs in the state. Now pointing to the large concentration of aerospace and defense manufacturers in the state, he said we are the third most concentrated state for aerospace. Malloy said if the president wants to have a military parade, we will be well represented. Now Bill Amalfotano, ASML general manager, spoke immediately after Malloy and made it clear that the company is in Wilton for the long term. There's more on that story at WiltonBulletin.com. And in other news, if you're a book lover, the Darien Library is launching Book Matchmaker, a book recommendation service to help connect readers to great books. Now, patrons who participate will receive a hand-picked book based on their reading preferences every 12 weeks. Now, the Book Matchmaker program is an extension of the library's reader advisory service, and the goal of the program is to build relationships with patrons while providing tailored reading recommendations to subscribers in an easy and convenient way. Now, the service is loosely based on startup subscribers businesses such as Stitch Fix and Birchbox. Now to participate in the program, patrons fill out an online form to determine their reading preferences and patrons are then matched with a reader advisor who selects a book and checks it out with them with a personalized note explaining the reason behind that selection. Now Butch Ma Book Matchmaker is open to adults and teens with registered library cards. You can get more information at darienlibrary.org. 
And Ridgefield drivers once again found themselves waiting in long lines of traffic on Danbury Road Friday afternoon, only this time it had nothing to do with the state's bridge construction project in front of the Fox Hill condominiums. The culprit this time was a faulty crosswalk light at the intersection of Danbury Road and Farmingville Road that kept being triggered even though nobody was waiting to cross the street. Now that broken traffic light allowed about five to six cars to pass through the intersection at a time, backing up traffic as far as the mobile station on the southern end of Danbury Road. Road. Ridgefield police reported that problem to the state's Department of Transportation, who they said were coming out to fix that light. And the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is underway this week at Madison Square Garden, and a Darien resident returns as the voice of that event. Gail Miller Bisher of Darien is joined by Fox Sports play-by-play -play announcer Chris Myers at Westminster. And you can catch the live telecast on FS1 on Monday and Tuesday, February 12th through 13th from 8 to 11 p.m. Organizers say more than 3,200 dogs entered across three dog sports will entertain, enamor, and excite dog lovers around the world. Now, for more on Bisher, you can visit DarianTimes.com. But all right, let's throw it back over to Frank Granito now for your Nutmeg Sports Update. Frank, it was a busy weekend for the HN Network. Uh, yes, it was. And before we get to the coverage of the wrestling tournament this weekend, let's congratulate our Athlete of the Week winners, Tess Stapleton of the Fairfield Ludlow Track and Field Team and Jake Ritz of the New Canaan Boys Swimming Squad. Stapleton, a freshman, placed first in the 55-meter hurdles and the high jump and took second in the long jump, leading the Falcons to a third place finish at the FCX Championships on Thursday last week. Jake Ritz won individual events and was part of two winning relays for New Canaan, who knocked off their rival Darien 99-87. Uh, Ritz was first in the 200 and the 500 meter freestyle and was on the Rams 200 and 400 freestyle relay teams in the wins. Make sure you're back with us at two o'clock for our new Athlete of the Week winner or excuse me nominees congrats again to our winners and congratulations to Danbury um, winning an eighth consecutive FCAC championship in wrestling they outlasted Fairfield Ward 242 to 202 New Canaan would come in third place with 168 points Alex Steele of Fairfield Ward was named the tournament's outstanding wrestler in the uh, on Saturday we'll have plenty more on Saturday's event coming up on Nutmeg Sports this afternoon Mike Suppy, John Kovach, Kevin Coleman will all join me we'll break down everything you need to know and get you caught up and get you ready for a big game tonight in girls basketball you've got Trumbull and Norwalk first place in the conference on the line as we start off the final week of the regular season we'll get you ready for that too. tip off at seven o'clock for now let's go back over to Kate all right, thanks so much, Frank. And we're going to step out for a break, come back, and recap some of the top stories we're following today after this. Set sail on a summertime adventure with Sail Away Sailing School. Located in Captain's Cove Seaport in Bridgeport, we're sailing June 18th through August 10th. Two sessions offered daily, Monday through Friday, for ages 9 to 15. Have fun, make friends, learn to sail. Visit TeamSailAway.com. At Pamby Motors, we're not worried about being the biggest dealership. We're focused on being the best. We're dedicated to giving you the best experience we can. The Pamby Motors team is here to help you choose the right Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, or Ram in a friendly, pressure-free environment. And right now, during Ram Truck Month, get up to $14,000 off on all in-stock 2017 Ram 1500 pickups. Come in and see us for details. Visit Pamby Motors, Route 7 in Ridgefield, PambyZone.com. At Budget Blinds, we're in business to frame the light, the day, and the night. So we give you an exclusive combination of high style, expert service, our no surprises pricing, and our no questions asked warranty. We believe that everyone, at every budget, deserves style and service. Isn't that a beautiful place to be? If you've ever thought about owning a motor coach or learning about what it's like to travel the open road in superior style and comfort, then contact Dave's RV Center in Danbury, Connecticut. Offering the best quality Class A motorhomes from Newmar, travel trailers and fifth wheel lines from Surveyor, and a toy hauler line from Work and Play. Choose from Newmar's Gas Line, Base Star and Canyon Star, or from Newmar's Diesel Line, Ventana and Dutch Star. And with unparalleled service and maintenance, Dave's RV is committed to keeping you and your motor coach safely on the road and enjoying it to the fullest. Stop by their showroom, 2 Industrial Plaza Road, Danbury, Connecticut, or call 877-483-3866. If you've ever thought of... 
Welcome back to this Monday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski recapping some of the top stories we're following today. Fairfield police on Sunday said they're looking for an armed robbery suspect. Now this happened at Star Fuels on Jennings Road near Black Rock Turnpike. Police say that suspect was armed with a knife and described as a white male about six feet tall in his 20s or 30s with long brown hair and cuts and scrapes on his hands. Now police are asking if you have any information to contact them directly at 203 Two five four four eight four zero. And about 16 residential burglaries have been reported in the past two months in Milford. And on most occasions, police say a large rock has been thrown through a rear window or door to gain entry. Now, these burglaries occur mostly between 4 and 8 p.m. Jewelry, lock boxes, and other items that can easily be carried have been taken from bedrooms. Now, Milford police said the burglaries have taken place on Lower Naugatuck Avenue, High Street, and in the vicinity of Foreign High School. However, they say all areas of the city need to be on alert. Now, an older model gray sedan was seen near one of these incidents, police said, and a light-colored minivan was seen near another. Now, witnesses also reported seeing a male described as white in his 30s with facial hair, wearing a hooded sweatshirt, jeans, and gloves at one of these incidents. At the most recent, a light-skinned male was seen jogging through the area, dressed in dark clothes at the time. Police are asking residents to be vigilant and immediately report any suspicious people or vehicles at the time that they are observed. And in other news, nearly 24,000 United Illuminating customers in Stratford and Bridgeport lost power late Saturday night. Kevin Ortiz, a spokesman for United Illuminating, said Sunday that the outage was related to issues at two substations. Now, the outage occurred at about 9.45 at night, and roughly 14,000 customers had their power restored within 15 minutes, he said, and all other customers had power back by about 5.30 in the morning on Sunday. Ortiz said the cause of those outages remains under investigation. And Norwalk police have arrested three local men for home invasion and assault that occurred back on November 23, 2017. Now, on February 9th, police arrested Luke Sweeney, Joseph Ponger, and Michael Mayorino, all of Norwalk, on warrants for assault, home invasion, and conspiracy following a lengthy police investigation. Now, back in November, this happened at around 1 in the morning, a 911 caller reported that several people had broken into the home and had viciously assaulted one of the occupants. Patrol officers arrived on scene and discovered a male victim suffering from numerous stab and slash wounds. However, the suspects had fled. Now, that victim was transported to Norwalk Hospital, and the investigation led by Detective Brendan Collins revealed that multiple masked assailants had forced entry into the home, and one of those assailants contacted the victim who was in bed, and then a struggle ensued. Now, the assailant Assailants then began stabbing the victim who fought back and believed he was able to injure one of those attackers. All the suspects then ran away. Now, members of the crime scene unit processed that scene for evidence, discovering evidence they say both inside and outside of that home. Well, that evidence and numerous interviews and canvassing of the area led police to those three suspects who are now charged. And in other news, during a recent 18th month period, 21 people have died of accidental overdoses in Stratford. Officials say almost all died from opioids such as heroin, and most were white men aged 30 to 35 and 50 to 65. Now, Kelly Meyer, a health educator with the Stratford Health Department, said the average age surprises people because most presume it's younger people who are overdosing. However, she said it's not just kids, it's a range of ages. Now, statewide statistics also show that most accidental drug related deaths involve people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, with 917 Connecticut residents dying in 2016. Now, overdose deaths in Connecticut have grown at a much faster rate than the national average in recent years, according to Meyer, and the number of opioid-related deaths is likely to continue increasing. She also said the number of women becoming addicted to heroin, oxycodone, and other opioids is also on the rise. Now, Meyer discussed this opioid crisis during a lunch and learn talk at the Stratford Library, touching on statistics, narcotics history, as well as recognizing an overdose and using Narcan to save someone who is overdosing. There's much more on that story at StraffordStar.com. But let's take one final look at your forecast with Frank Granito. Frank. All right, thank you, Kate. And again, we're looking at a couple more showers, possibly patches of snow or even hail heading our way for the next few hours or so. But things should start to clear up later on this afternoon. We'll even see some sunshine around Fairfield County for the first time in a couple of days. Highs in the mid-40s today, lows in the low 20s overnight with mostly clear skies. Mostly sunny skies tomorrow, but there will be a mix of clouds throughout the day. A high of 35. It's a little bit cooler. 
chilly overnight with mostly clear skies. And then Wednesday, things on the mild side. Temperatures are back up almost into the low 50s. Mostly sunny, but increasing cloud cover late in the day, overnight, and we could see a couple more showers heading our way early, or excuse me, late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning. Back at 2 o'clock with Nutmeg Sports, John Kovach, Mike Suppy, Kevin Coleman will all join me. And tonight, girls basketball, Trumbull and Norwalk for the top spot in the conference. 7 o'clock tip-off from the Black Hole. Kate, that'll do it for me. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Frank. And we are going to wrap things up here on your coffee break, but we'll see you tomorrow with the latest local news and more. Have a great day.